morning, good morning, good morning, good morning and welcome to Good Friday. Welcome to church on Good Friday and it's Good Friday because although it's not yet Sunday, we have 2,000 years of history to tell us he is the risen king. Give him a big hand clap this morning. Now it's a good time to move around and greet as many people as you can. Find some you don't know, don't know too well, haven't never seen your life before. Make them feel most welcome. This Father God, we give you all the praise and honor and glory this morning. You sent your Son to earth to live among us, to become one of us and to die for us. This morning we give you all the honor and all the glory. You've risen him from the dead and he lives forevermore. And Father, it's Good Friday. So we want to celebrate the fact that on the very first Friday, after which we call it good, Jesus took our sins in his body on the cross that we might die to sin and live for righteousness. By his wounds we have been healed. And we thank you, our Father God, in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. Please be seated, church. If you're kids, you're up to kids' church. Kids, everybody else stay seated. You're not going to kids' church. Some years ago, uh, in this local area, somewhere in the mid-90s, I would think we, uh, all the local churches used to get together at Easter and do something either on Good Friday or on Easter Saturday. Good Friday, often it would be, let's get all the churches go down to Shoalwater Bay and have a dawn service. And we would get a band on the back of the truck and we would preach from the back of the truck. I'll never forget this because we're down in Shoalwater and some of the folk that had gathered there earlier and they were part of the church community, they got their deck chairs on the beach and they're looking out towards the western sea. But we're on the back of the truck up here and they're down there looking that way. And I'm the preacher and the band's just played a few songs and I go, folks, got a microphone, got speakers on the back of the truck. It'd be good now if you could turn around and face back this way this lady yelled out, I don't want to. I want to watch the sun come up. And I thought, she believes the miracle of Easter because it's never going to come up out of the West now, is it? <laughs> Another time we uh, took the truck and we, we, the people marched behind the truck and we closed off Reed Street and we drove all the way down to Churchill Park. And uh, I was a preacher again, actually, but uh, the lady was leading the worship as we went down, as we drove down Reed Street. Uh, she was leading, and, and as we just pulled up near, near Churchill Park, she said, Would you give a big round of applause to the risen king? And everyone, and this lady came and got me because I'm about to preach, and she came up the truck and she goes, It's only Saturday. He doesn't rise till tomorrow. I just want to tell you, we've got over 2,000 years of history to say he's already risen. You don't have to wait till Sunday. He's already the risen king. Amen. We're using the theme Easter relaunch this Easter to encapsulate the idea uh, uh, that Jesus' resurrection gives us the opportunity to relaunch our lives uh, from where we are or where we have been, from disappointment sometimes, from negative experiences. Indeed, uh, the resurrection of Christ has opened up the way for anyone who commits to him to relaunch their lives in ways that honor him and it blesses you, the individual. You can have a new beginning because of Easter, because of Jesus, because of his sacrifice on the cross and his resurrection. You know that often uh, when we're hurt by someone, and, and we, we all do get hurt by someone somewhere in life, instead of letting go and uh, moving forward, we try to figure out ways of getting back at the individual or, or, or at the situation. Or even if we don't 
figure out, you know, how we're going to do something to them, uh, we, we, we kind of decide some things we won't do to them or for them. And uh, we kind of, in our heart of hearts, kind of want to despise them as if that'll fix them up, you know. And, and it never will. You can do all the despising you like about someone that's grieved you. And, and it, they won't even know you're doing the despising. And, and so it's not going to hurt them at all. It'll just hurt you by getting an embittered spirit in you. Or as someone said, if you've got that kind of attitude uh, to kind of despise them in your heart of hearts, that'll fix them up. That's like you drinking rat poison to fix them up. It'll fix you up. It'll, it'll kill you. That's what it'll do. So you need to let go of that animosity and uh, negative spirit. You need to let it go. And so this message this morning is titled, Letting Go to Relaunch. And as I, there'll be someone here today, and there's some things you need to let go and some people you need to go in order to relaunch your life. You'll start to think about it now, and you'll know I'm, it's true what I'm saying. I, I want you to hear some of uh, Jesus' teaching on this before you engage with what the impact of his crucifixion and resurrection might be for you. Jesus speaks. John 12, 23, 25, Jesus replied, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly, I tell you, unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. Anyone who loves his life will lose it, while anyone who hates their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Jesus said these words as he's about to go to the cross. The cross is looming. And he was speaking about the fact that just as a seed uh, must fall to the ground and die in order to germinate and grow into a plant that will produce much fruit, uh, he too was about to die in order to produce much fruit. That, that's what he's talking about. And he was speaking of himself firstly uh, as a seed that would fall to the ground and die in order to bear much fruit. And, and then, then, then he was looking to his disciples and looking to us that we too might let go of something uh, in order to germinate and become a new fruit-bearing plant. Uh, that's what he's talking about. John 12, 34, same context. Uh, unless it falls to the ground and dies, it remains a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. And so Jesus did just that, what he's talking about here. He let go and he went to the cross and he's produced many seeds. Gospel seeds all over planet Earth. Every nation on earth, gospel seeds have been planted. Uh, thinking about the letting go, and Jesus did this, and he's asking us to let go of something or other, whatever it might be for you. Uh, you probably won't need to go to a cross to do this, but there's something you need to let go of. There comes a point in time uh, for this matter of letting go to actually happen. For you it might be this morning. Uh, Jesus, Good Friday is about Jesus' time, Jesus' hour. And Jesus prefaced his words about the seed falling to the ground in this way. John 12, 23, Jesus replied, The hour, same context, the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. The hour has come. And so you need to know that when that time comes for you to let go of whatever it is you need to let go of, that making that decision to let go uh, it, it won't necessarily be an easy and comfortable thing. It'll be as tough as. It'll be so really tough. John 12, 27, now, says Jesus, same context, uh, now my soul is troubled. And what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour? No. It was for this reason that I came to this hour. It's this very reason. That's what I'm here for. And, and, and for some of you, that's what you're here for, to let go of something or other. Uh, that you might be blessed, God might be honored, and someone around you might be blessed. Please know that Jesus... For this reason, he said, Jesus Christ is the Son of God and the Son of Man. Get your head around that. Uh, Jesus is God in human flesh. And so while he is divinity, the heavenly being, he is also human, uh, the human being. And any human being will not relish or think good thoughts about being nailed to a cross. Nobody's going to think good. Oh, yeah, this is my day. Nailed me to the cross. No one's going to think that. And Jesus is no different to us. He, he go, whoa. This is going to hurt. I don't want to do it. But in spite of the human inclination to avoid the cross, Jesus, in his spirit, said, that's the reason I've come, to lay down my life for humanity, 
Uh, and that's why he says, my soul is troubled. That's why I came. I've got to do it. But really, I don't want to do it, but I've got to do it. And eventually the Good Friday came and Jesus was arrested and tried and nailed to the cross and the charges were based around the fact that he, he's, he's the king, he's the heavenly king, uh, he's the king. And so Pilate, the Roman governor, asked him, John 18.33, are you a king then? And uh, John 18.37, Jesus answered, you say that I am a king. In fact, the reason I was born and came into the world is to testify to the truth or to that truth. Jesus was speaking about the truth of the kingdom that he had come to establish and he spoke about the reason he was born, uh, the reason that he being God took on human flesh to lay down his life in order that in the power of his resurrection we too may make a new beginning in his name. That's a good news of Easter. So one evening uh, prior to this, earlier in Jesus' ministry, one of the religious leaders of Jesus' day, a Pharisee and man by the name of Nicodemus, came to Jesus at night and the reason he came at night he didn't want his buddies the other Pharisees to see him chatting to Jesus because they didn't really get on he came to talk to Jesus about the kingdom of heaven John 3 3 as he as, as, as Nicodemus opened up this subject Jesus replied John 3 3 very truly I tell you no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again and that that, that got Nicodemus to pondering wondering how he could get back in his mother's womb. That's what he said. Wow, you're the big religious dude of Israel and you're thinking like that. So Jesus, uh, Jesus pushed forward. John 3, 5, very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of the water and the spirit. In other words, you, you can't enter the kingdom of God. In fact, you can't even see it unless you make this new beginning that Jesus called being born again, a spiritual new beginning. And, and then the dialogue, it's John 3, the dialogue concluded in John 3.16, which many people in church life seem to know that verse, but it's tied back to the other ones about being born again. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. In other words, Jesus, in other words Nicodemus, here, I, I think that's what you're thinking, Nicodemus. You're thinking because you have Jewish ethnicity, you're in, baby. And that's what you're thinking, that's what you're wrestling with. Well, I'm here to tell you, Jesus is saying, it doesn't matter what your ethnic origins are. I'm not going to do you any favors. Uh, it doesn't matter where you're born. That's, that's, not what, that's not doing it. It has nothing to do with what nation or ethnic group you're born into. It, it rather has to do with a new birth being born in uh, to, to a faith community that consists of people, Revelation 7, 9, from every tribe and tongue and people and nation. Not to do with any, it, it's to do with Jesus, not to do with eth ethnicity. And by the time we get to the end of the Gospel of John, we understand that this new birth is available because of Jesus having let go and laid down his life for us and then rising from the dead. It's about letting go. So how, how do you step, how do I step into this new life that Jesus has laid down his life to purchase for you and, and for me? How do we do that? Well, well see, so, so I've done it. And I did it one Easter long ago now. Easter is a good time to make the new beginning because it's, it's in our face. It was in my face. I, 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 I wasn't a believer. I didn't go to church. Uh, someone came and testified to me about a new beginning uh, with God in, in the name of Jesus Christ by surrendering to him. It's a matter of letting go of everything that you think might commend you to him. Well, I've been good. I've never done that bad thing. I've done all these good things. If that surely I've been a good person. Is surely he will let me in. It's got nothing to do with any good things you've done. You, you can think of everything you can about all the good things you've done that might commend. That's not it. So, well, I, I know, I know, I know, I know. It's, it's a matter of stopping doing some things. I know. And I've got all this list that I could stop doing. No, that's not it. It's about letting go of any ideas that you have and letting Jesus do the job, trusting Jesus. So Jesus spoke about the seed remaining, one seed unless it falls into the ground and dies, and if it falls to the ground and dies, then it would germinate and grow and become a uh, fruit, and in the fruit many seeds. And he not only spoke about his own mission, uh, but about us letting go. On the cross, think about this, letting go, letting go. And some of you uh, will wrestle with this very thing I'm about to talk about. They've arrested Jesus and charged him. 
and uh, now they're crucifying him. So he's, he, they, they've flogged him without mercy. So his back is lacerated and bleeding. Uh, they've stuck a crown of thorns on his head so that the thorns go into his flesh and there's blood trickling down his face. And then they nail him hand and foot to the cross. Now, if, if someone treats you like that, you're not thinking good thoughts about them. You're not thinking, wow, that's good, I'll have my for a party. They're the kind of people I want to hang with. That's not what you're thinking. And, and so Jesus on the cross, and this is what he does. He stops and he prays. And for some of you, you need to stop and pray this morning because it's a matter of letting go. And this is how Jesus let go. Uh, John 23, 34, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they are doing. Huh. I just see a lot of that. People doing dumb things and they don't really realize what the ramifications of the dumb things are that they're doing. And sometimes they hurt you by doing those and they just don't realize it. The thing is, can you do that? This could be your prayer this morning. Father, forgive them for they don't know what they're doing. That's, that's, that's part of letting go. And so on that cross, uh, Jesus paid for everything that stood in the way of a right relationship with you and you and you and any of us and, and Father God, Creator God. And think about that because, see, God can't look on sin. God can't look on sin. Habakkuk 1.13, uh, God is of two pure eyes to look upon sin. Uh, think about that because 1 Peter 2.24, speaking of Jesus, he himself bore our sins in his body on the cross that we might die to sin and live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. He himself bore your sin and my sin in his body on the cross as if... If, if your sin and my sin were drums of slop and they're all poured over Jesus, that's our, uh, our, our, our mucky sins, and, and God can't look on that stuff. But it's all over Jesus now. 2 Corinthians 5.21 in the New Living Translation, For God made Christ who had never sinned to be the offering for our sin uh, so that we could be made right with God through Christ. Uh, Jesus got your sin and mine all over him on the cross as he bore our sins in his body on the cross. Father God, who is of two pure eyes, couldn't look at the Son of God. And, and the pain of the flogging, the pain of the crown of thorns, the pain of the nails, as painful as they were, they paled in comparison, uh, comparison to the agony of the rift between father and son. Uh, father and son ha had never been, th th they had been so united for all of eternity, and suddenly there's this rift, and so that Jesus on the cross cries out in Aramaic, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Father and Son, no rift for all of eternity. And for this time of the cross, rift. The agony. And Jesus paid the price for your forgiveness and your salvation on the cross that first Good Friday. And when the payment had been made, he cried out one more time. John 19.30, Jesus said, It is finished! And with that he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. The crowd were looking on. As the crowd looked on, they wanted to cry out from their heart of hearts and with their mouth, He is finished! The super healer had come. He promised so much, but now He is finished. But Jesus didn't cry out, I am finished. He cried out, It is finished. Uh, Greek tetelestai means it is completed. The job I came to do, the mission I came to do, it is accomplished and completed. So Paul writes about the Apostle Paul later on in Colossians 2, 13 to 15. When you were dead in your sins and in the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made you alive with Christ. He forgave us all our sins, having cancelled the charge of our legal indebtedness which stood against us. He has taken it away, nailing it to the cross. Your sins and mine, the, the bill against us was nailed to the cross. Stamp paid in full by the blood of Jesus Christ right there on the cross. And having disarmed the powers and authorities, who might they be? The devil and his demons? Huh? And they're thinking, they're looking on and they're thinking with the crowd, he is finished. We've gotten rid of our arch enemy. We'll take over the world. Jesus cried out, it is finished. And having disarmed the powers and authorities, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them by the cross. You know, it's called Good Friday because the price is paid. Price is paid. The devil is a defeated foe. You think about the devil. He, he, it's, it's like playing a chess game, you know. It's like playing a, a chess game. And he, and he thought, I've got him, I've got him, I've got him on the cross. Check. 
And as Jesus came up out of the tomb, he said, checkmate. He's a defeated foe. Come on. He didn't count on Jesus being the sin bearer. He didn't count on resurrection. And the scripture that I've read to you says, God made you alive with Christ if you'll accept it. It's time for relaunch, isn't it? For many people, it's a time for relaunch. It is. If you've never begun with, 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 with by faith in Christ to make that right relationship right with God, that could be you this morning. It was me one Easter. I'm still going. I haven't stopped. I'm right with God. It's time for relaunch. It's time for you to make a new beginning. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. All is gone. The new has come. All this is from God who is in Christ, reconciling the world to himself. Now it's given us the ministry of reconciliation. So this morning, for some of you, it's time to let go and time to relaunch. And you let go by surrendering your life to Jesus Christ. And so you can become all that God has purposed for you to become. Let me finish with this. Jeremiah 20, 11, 29, 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. Give yourself to Jesus and he will give you more than you could ever imagine. He will, he will, God will in Jesus' name. Father in heaven, thank you for this is good, this is good Friday. This is Easter. I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you, not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. Old has gone and the new has come. Father, some folk here this morning need to let go and they're finding it hard. Holy Spirit, come and do a ministry. Brood over the people in this house. Loosen the bonds of that which they need to let go of. Help us all, Father, to relaunch that we might become all we can become in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand, church. We have a song to sing and it's a remake of the old hymn, the John Newton hymn, Amazing Grace. It's a remake of that. And as we sing that, there's probably someone here this morning and for the very first time you're feeling compelled and constrained to do something about getting right with God by faith in Jesus Christ. And you know that you can do that right where you stand or sit right now in the congregation. But this morning I just want to give you the opportunity to come down the front. So I'm making it right this morning. I just want to do it publicly so that everyone sees me. I'm just stepping out for God. I'm stepping out to relaunch. I'm stepping out to make a new beginning. I'm stepping out to get it right today and forever in Jesus' name. As we sing, make your way down here and I will pray with you. Let's sing. Father, you're the one that in Jesus' name raises up the broken to life and Sometimes we get a bit beaten and battered and broken to go through our journey in, in, in life. And Father, we ask that this morning that would be you mending us as we step toward you, Father God, in Jesus' name. You'll mend us. Ask that we'll let go in order that we might be able to relaunch. Ask that for every individual in this house, Father. Thank you, Lord God. Father, for those who are wrestling with any issues this morning, may they know the peace and the presence of your Holy Spirit, leading them on and empowering them in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. Amen. Folks, just before you go, just before you move, uh, just a few things. Hot cross buns. You're going to have to help us eat those. There's a truckload of them there. All right. Uh, and uh, go into the cafe, get yourself a coffee and a hot cross bun. Out the back, little seats and tables. Just hang around for a little while. Chitter chatter to people. That would be really, really good. A little book, book stall in there too while you, you check that out while you're in the cafe. Get yourself a coffee and a hot cross bun. Sunday, 9 a.m., 6 p.m., love to see you back here. Meanwhile, you have a fantastic day, a great weekend. Drive carefully on those roads. Don't become a statistic. Drive carefully. Be blessed.